good evening dear students uh, now we are going to discuss the rank of a matrix uh, before i start please uh, you know couple of you please confirm that you are able to hear my voice very clearly and able to uh, view the screen properly dear students yes sir yes okay sir. great thanks for your confirmation so <clears throat> what is rank of a matrix the rank of a matrix is a non negative integer that means a number r is said to be the rank of a matrix if two conditions are going to be hold true what are the two conditions let us discuss and uh, and proceed further as you see dear students the you know points what i brought in front of you the rank of a matrix is a non negative integer a number r is said to be a rank of a matrix a if there exist at least a r cross r sub matrix of a whose determinant is not equal to 0 and the second condition dear students is that the determinant of every r plus 1 cross r plus 1 sub matrix of a is equal to 0 what does it mean suppose i have a you know square matrix of order 3 <clears throat> suppose now from that matrix you know if we can find a 2 by 2 sub matrix, at least one 2 by 2 sub matrix, the value of the determinant of that 2 by 2 sub matrix is not equal to 0, then you can say that the rank of that matrix is 2 subject to the condition that the 3 by 3 means 2 plus 1 cross 2 plus 1 sub matrix of A is equal to 0. Let me take an, another example. <clears throat> Let me write that one. For example, uh, you know, we have a, um, uh, you know, matrix and here, whenever we are going to find the rank of a matrix, you know, it no need to be, uh, you know, the in a square matrix. It is possible to have, you know, uh, a, a, you know, to find the rank of any kind of matrix, whether it is square or not square, that doesn't matter. For example, let's take a, you know, 3 by 4 matrix. So, for example, 3 by 4 matrix will be what? A11, A12, A13, A14, A21, A22, A23, a24 a31 a32 a33 a34 the point is that the rank of this matrix is nothing but a non negative integer okay <clears throat> that means the you know it can have a rank 1 or 2 or 3 maximum three why you know dear students because you know if we can say that the rank of this matrix is one what does it mean it means is that you can find at least one matrix okay of one cross one that means it has only one row and one column that is means it is a single term set of that matrix which is not equal to zero or we can say the rank of this matrix is two if we find a two by two sub matrix for example we find a two by two sub matrix something like this okay and the value of this two by two sub matrix is not equal to zero but if you take any three by three sub matrix the value of that sub matrix would be zero for example 
as you see this 2 by 2 sub matrix is not equal to 0 let's assume it but if you take any 3 by 3 sub matrix for example if you take a you know matrix something like this what i am whatever i am actually you know um, right you know enclosing within the green box then the, that is also you know 3 by 3 matrix the value of the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix is equal to 0 whereas the value of the 2 by 2 matrix sub matrix that is what i what i enclosed in the blue box is not equal to 0 then we can say the rank of this matrix is equal to 2 i hope it is clear dear students so let me repeat once more the rank of a matrix is a non negative integer that is the first statement and the second statement dear students is that a number r is said to be a rank of a matrix if there exists at least a r cross r sub matrix of a whose determinant is not equal to 0 and second one is that you can find every you know r, cross, r plus 1 cross r plus 1 determinant if sorry every r plus 1 cross r plus 1 uh, you know sub matrix of a should be equal to 0 then you can say the rank of this matrix is r now you may think it you know so far by listening whatever i said you may have two questions come to your mind first one is that sir what is the purpose of a rank of a matrix first one and second one is that you can say that sir how i can find the rank of a matrix it is very difficult thus definition what you said from that if i need to construct all three by three determine you know sub matrix and finding their value and if the values are not equal to zero then i can say rank three or if it is coming to zero then i need to compute every two by two sub matrix okay every means the moment we get one sub matrix which is not equal to zero we can say yes it is two subject to the condition three by three sub matrix determinant of the three by three any three by three sub matrix is zero but entire process will take time so these are the two very very basic questions can come to your mind the first question is that what is the purpose of finding the rank of a matrix the purpose of finding the rank of a matrix dear students will help us to solve uh, you know the solution to system of linear equations we will see this today if time permits and second thing is that how to find the rank of a matrix so that is the next point of discussion that how we can find the rank of a matrix and this process what we are going to learn in the next 10 to 15 minutes from now okay that will uh, you know be very very important lessons we are going to learn and that will actually help us to find the you know help us in finding the you know solution to the system of linear equations so let us uh, you know let us uh, concentrate on that that how we can find uh, you know the you know the rank of a matrix to find the rank of a matrix dear students that few process has to be followed okay and before i proceed to steps to find the you know rank of a matrix okay uh, i just would like to tell you that the you know speciality little you know speciality about the rank of a square matrix so suppose a be a um, you know um, you know square matrix of order n so suppose a be a square matrix of order n sorry let me put it here okay so what i was telling dear students that uh, suppose we have a square matrix a of order n that means it has n number of rows and n number of columns and let ra be the rank of that square matrix a we are defining ra be the rank of that square matrix a whose order is n then what we can say is that ra should be equal to n if a is a non singular matrix that means the value of the determinant of the matrix a is non zero okay 
for example if a matrix is given to you a 3 by 3 matrix why i talk about 3 by 3 matrix you know dear students because that is the most you know common form you know order of matrix which is coming to examinations generally so if are you, you take a 3 by 3 square matrix and if you find if you see the value of the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix is you know uh, not equal to 0 then you can say oh the rank of that matrix is 3 now if it is 0 okay then what will happen that you know rank of a should be less than n if a is a singular matrix that means what the value of the determinant of the matrix a is 0 I hope it is clear dear students so I just repeat once more suppose a be a square matrix of order n and let ra be the rank of that square matrix a then if we see that a is a non-singular matrix then we can say the rank of that matrix a is n or if we see that a is a singular matrix that means what if the value of the determinant of that square matrix of order n is zero then you can say the rank of that matrix must be lesser than n and you know dear students it that the word we are using here is that iff if that means if and only if that means the converse of that statement is also true that means what ra equal to n if we just focus on the first statement dear students ra equal to n that means what the rank of that matrix is equal to n then we can say that definitely the value of the determinant of the matrix a is not equal to zero on the other way if we have a square matrix of order n and i say Hey, dear students, you know, I have a square matrix of order n and the value of the determinant of that square matrix is not equal to zero. Then you can say, sir, oh, rank of that matrix is n. So converse is also true. In the similar way, the second point, suppose I get a, uh, you know, rank of a matrix which is lesser than the order of the matrix n. Then you can say, oh, sir, the value of the determinant of the matrix A of order N must be zero. On the other way, if I say, hey, dear students, I have a square matrix A of order N, you know the value of the determinant of that matrix is equal to zero. Then you can say, oh, sir, rank of that matrix must be lesser than N. That means it could be N minus one, N minus two, N minus three, like that. But it has to be a, you know, positive integer. And rank of a null matrix is assumed to be zero. Okay, rank of a null matrix is assumed to be zero. So these are the fundamental definition and different you know uh, cases about the rank of a matrix. Now what we are going to discuss, dear students, we are going to discuss that how to find the rank of a matrix. What are the steps you should follow to find the rank of a matrix? And after that, we will you know you know look into one. Uh, problem we will find we will take a matrix and we will find the rank of that matrix and let's see so our next point of discussion is the steps to find a rank of a matrix okay first i will tell you the steps after that i will take one example and show it to you that how the rank of a matrix is obtained so, so dear students you know to find the rank of a matrix is you know we need to perform elementary transformations. If you recall, dear students, about the elementary transformations, it is uh, we discussed few classes, uh, you know, uh, you know, few, you know, few days back we discussed about elementary operations, and um, we also, um, you know, observed that how to find the inverse of a matrix by means of elementary transformations. You can look into that corresponding YouTube video lecture, which is available in YouTube or also available in the online uh, platform at conarclasses.com. But, uh, you know, here I'm going to tell you that how you can use those elementary transformation on matrix to find the rank of a matrix. Okay. <clears throat> so here are the steps. So <clears throat> elementary of transformations on matrix are useful to find the rank of a matrix. So what are those steps, dear students? Let me first write it down. And after that, I'll explain one by one.
So let me first, you don't need to go through all these statements. I will take you through. Elementary transformations on matrix are useful to find the rank of a matrix. Let A be any matrix, okay? We can find the rank of the matrix A by means of the following steps. What is the first step? First step is that apply the following six elementary transformations multiple times on the matrix A to bring maximum number of zeros in that matrix. Okay, so that means you take a matrix A, a matrix is given to you and our task is to perform elementary transformations, okay, multiple times and what is our target? Our target is to bring maximum number of zeros in the transformed matrix, okay. Now if you recall, what are the, you know, symbolic notation for these transformations? And if you recall, there are three row transformations and three column transformations. What are the transformations? First one is that Ri and Rj are interchanged or Ci and Cg are interchanged. That is interchanging any two row or interchanging any two columns. Second one is that, you know, Ri is equal to Ri, new Ri is actually K times Ri or new Cj is K time L time Cj, sorry, not K time L time Cj. So that means multiply each element of the ith row by a non-zero number k or multiplication of each element of the jth column by a non-zero element l. And the third one is that, that new ri is the old ri plus k rj or new cj, new cj is equal to old cj plus l into cp. What does it mean? Find the first one that new ri is equal to ri plus k rj. That means addition to the element of ith row, the corresponding element of the jth row multiplied by non zero number k. And what is the second one, dear students? Cj is new Cj is old Cj plus L into Cp. That means addition of the elements of the jth column the corresponding element of the pth column multiplied by the non-zero number p. So these are the elementary transformations we need to apply multiple times to bring maximum number of zeros in the transformed matrix. After that, what will happen dear students? After that, <clears throat> that we are going to follow the second step. What we'll get in the second step dear students is something like this. In the second step, what you are going to find is that, you know, you will at the end of the step one, the transform matrix is reduced. You know, the transform matrix is reduced to the normal form. This is called the normal form. If you see IR OOO, that is this 0, 0, 0 or OOO, it is actually denoted as the null matrix. That means all the elements are 0. And IR is an identity matrix of order R. And each O is a null matrix of the suitable size, which means whatever the size you can define. Then if the transform matrix is reduced to like this, then you can say the rank of the matrix A is R. Let me first explain you, okay, how is actually being obtained. After that, we will take a very practical example. <clears throat> Suppose, dear students, a matrix is given to you something like this. You know, A11, A12, A13, A14, A15. I'm just writing it is a, you know, 4 by 5 matrix A21, A22, A23, A24, A25, A31, A32, A33, A34, 
a three five a four one a four two a four three a four four a four five so as you see dear students this is a four by five matrix that means it has four rows and five columns now what happened <clears throat> suppose uh, you know you are going to find the rank of this matrix then what will do dear students you are going to perform a series of elementary transformations as we just learned elementary transformations we are aware of but as we learned that this is one step to find the rank of the matrix so you will find the you know elementary transformations elementary elementary transformations multiple times you apply elementary transformations multiple times and as a result what is the target what is the objective to perform those elementary transformations the objective of the elementary transformations is to bring maximum number of zeros in that matrix with which you have started in the left hand side written in red then after that what will bring dear students you know suppose you got a matrix something like this after those transformations you see something like this you know b11 b11 b1 sorry b11 b12 0 0 0 b21 b22 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and more specifically what we can say is that b11 b12 b21 b22 no? so we can write this thing as a you know something called an identity matrix means what i'm going to say is that 1 0 0 1 then what we can say is that you know so what is this form is something like this now it is as if if i take a little bit in the right hand side so its form is something like this this is nothing but equal to you get i2 correct or not okay and then you get a null matrix here this is the null matrix correct you can assume let me use the different color suppose this is one null matrix this is one null matrix and this is one null matrix that's why it is written that o is a null matrix of suitable size then what we are going to see dear students i20 so and so you can write it in a more clear manner so it becomes i20 0 0 0 where i2 is an identity matrix of order 2 so what we can say dear students we can say the rank of this given matrix which you see in the red color in the left hand side the rank of this matrix is actually we can say it is 2 i hope it is clear dear students now i am going to take one example and would like to show you that how we can find the rank of the matrix and and it will um, it will be very uh, you know interesting if you if you if you see suppose <clears throat> uh, let us for example let us find the rank of this matrix uh, you know this one so what i'm going to show you is that mat let me write the matrix first so suppose here is the matrix here is a 3 by 3 matrix as you see dear students i read that matrix row wise 1 2 3 3 4 5 and 4 6 8 and what is the task at our hand dear students the task at our hand is that to find the rank of this matrix and we will see how by using that elementary transformations we can find the rank of this matrix so what is the matrix here dear students <clears throat> Suppose we name that matrix as A. 
is one, two, three, three, four, five, and four, six, eight. So now what we are going to do? We are going to do elementary transformations. And what is the objective of this elementary transformations? Objective is to bring maximum number of zeros. So what we can do first? First, what comes to my mind, dear students, is that my new R2 should be R2 plus R1. So that means what? So what I'm going to do is that I want to go in, uh, first let me write that, you know, blank matrix and let me write the operation. My new R2 is going to be old R2 plus R1. So that means R1 will remain the same. One, two, three. So now new R2 will be old R2 plus R1 corresponding elements will get added. So three should become three plus one that is four. Four will become four plus two that is six. And five become five plus three eight. And R3 will remain the same four, six, eight. After that, what we are going to do, dear students, is that I am going to make my new R3 is going to be old R3 minus R2. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm just again writing the blank matrix, dear students. And after that, I'll write the operations and then fill the elements accordingly. What I'm saying is that R3 is equal to R3. My new R3 is nothing but R3 minus R2. So the first row will remain the same. That is 1, 2, and 3. And the second row also will remain the same. That is 4, 6, 8. Now the R3, the third row, new third row will be the old third row element minus corresponding elements of the old, not old, R2. So that becomes 0, 4 minus 4, 0, 6 minus 6, 0, 8 minus 8, 0. Dear students, what was our objective as I said in the beginning to bring maximum number of zeros and we are we are achieving into this step, right? We are able to bring zeros. Now, what is the next, uh, you know, elementary transformations come to our mind? The next elementary transformations, what comes to my mind, dear students, is that I'm going to make R2, new R2 is nothing but hop into R2. That means I am going to divide each and every element in the R2 by 2. So that means what I'm going to get, dear students. So what I'm going to get from here is that, so first always write the blank matrix. First you write the operation that new R2 is 1 by 2 into R2. Here I would like to say one thing, you may think, Sir, what comes to your mind that you are taking this kind of, you know, operations? It may not be unique, dear students. You can choose your own operations, but those should be the elementary row or elementary column operations. Okay. It is not that exactly what I took, exactly these are the operations you need to take. You can take different. You can take different. No problem. But objective will remain the same. What is my objective and your objective? That has to be same. And what is that? To bring maximum number of zeros in the transform matrix. So now here R1 will remain the same. That is 1, 2, 3. R2 is 1 by 2 R2. That means 4, 6, 8. If we divide it by 2, become 2, 3, 4. So here we'll get 2, 3, 4. And the last row becomes 0, 0, 0. Correct, dear students. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do, dear students, that what comes to my mind is that I'm going to make the R2 is R2 minus R1. That means my new R2 is going to be the old R2 minus R1. So here I'm writing is that, so first I write as usual, the matrix first, then I write new R2 is actually R2 minus R1. So R1 will remain the same, one, two, three. And then R2 is R2 minus R1. That means two, 3, 4 become 2 minus 1, that is 1. 3 minus 2, that become 1. 4 minus 3 become 1. And then 0, 0, 0. After that, what comes to my mind, dear students, that <clears throat> I am going to make 
R1 is R1 minus R2. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make R1 is R1 minus R2. So let me write the operation first. My new R1 is going to be the old R1 minus R2. The corresponding element will get subtracted. So 1 minus 1 becomes 0, 2 minus 1 becomes 1, 3 minus 1 becomes 2, and it is 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0. You see, dear students, here we get one, zero, one more 0 with respect to the previous one. After that, what you can do? <coughs> After that, what comes to my mind, dear students, is that R2 is R2 minus R1. That is, my new R2 is going to be the old R2 minus R1. So let's do this thing. So I'm going to write this one that my old R2 become, sorry, my new R2 become old R2 minus R1. What I'm going to get then, 0, 1, 2, as it is the first row. Second row become 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 2 become minus 1, and 0, 0, 0. So dear students, <coughs> we, we bring one more 0. After that, what comes to, you know, what we can do? After that, dear students, what comes to my mind is something like this, is that let's now make column operation. My new column 3 is going to be the old column 3 plus column 1. So let me first write the blank matrix. And the operation is that new column 3 become old column 3 plus column 1. So first two columns we will write 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and New column 3 become column 3 plus column 1. That means 2 becomes 2 plus 0. That is 2. Minus 1 become minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0. And 0 becomes 0 plus 0 is 0. You see, dear students, we are bringing more zeros. Good. After that, what comes to my mind, dear students, is that, you know, my new column 3 is going to be the column 3 minus 2 times into column 2. So let me write as usual. Let me write first the you know, the blank matrix. And what I'm writing is that my new column 3 is going to be the old column 3 minus 2 into column 2. So that means first two columns I'll write as it is. That is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and column 3 minus 2 into column 2, so 2 become 2 minus 2 into 1, that is 0. It will be 0 minus 2 into 0, 0, 0 minus 2 into 0, 0. After that, what I'm going to do, dear students, is that <coughs> I'm going to make the column 1 and column 2 interchanged. <coughs> you see, dear students, here also I bring one more zeros. Now, after that, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is that, you know, column 1 and column 2 will get interchanged. That means, what is previous column 2, that is 1, 0, 0, will become my new column 1, that is 1, 0, 0. And what is old column 1, that is 0, 1, 0, will become the new column 2, that is 0, 1, 0. And then 0, 0, 0 as it is. Uh, that matrix doesn't look good. So let me do one thing. Let me remove this thing. Let me write a neat and clean manner. So, and what is the operation I say? That C1 and C2 get interchanged. Now, dear students, if you look into this matrix, it is a transform matrix. And what we get here, as if, if I use a different color, as if this is an identity matrix of order 2 okay and here we get a null matrix and here is also a null matrix so what we get so we get something like this this is actually equal to i2 null matrix null matrix null matrix 
correct enough to show what you can say is that okay or we can say one thing is that uh, you know we can break this thing this is one null matrix and this is one null matrix so what is the given matrix is given matrix was something like this as you see dear students one two three if i read row wise it was one two three three four five four six eight and after transformations after element after applications of the elementary transformations what we get is that we get and matrix something like this and which is in the form of i2 null matrix null matrix null matrix so we can see the rank of the given matrix is 2 so what we can say is that so we can say the rank of the so this implies the rank of the given matrix is 2 now I have few points to mention you before uh, you know I conclude this particular topic is that when you are going to you know apply these elementary transformations my suggestion is that first you make all the row transformations after that make all the column transformation do not mix up you see the way I have done it here first I made all the row transformations if you see I made first all the row transformations isn't it dear students if you look into this I made first all the row transformations here if you look into all these things after that I focused on the column transformations after that I focused on the column transformations correct and objective should be as I already already said several times is that objective should be to bring maximum number of zeros and eventually it is a the you know null it should be an identity matrix and then the rest will be the null matrix then what is the order of that identity matrix that should be the rank of the given matrix now dear students what I want you to do you know uh, you can practice more you can you can you know go to the online platform uh, test platform for corner classes and find uh, you know problem related to the rank of a matrix make practice how to find the rank of a matrix once you have a good you know and kind of holding on finding the rank of a matrix then we will discuss in the next class about how to solve a system of linear equations dear students you know once i explain you that how to solve a system of linear equations if you just follow this minutely any questions from that will become very easy to solve that's what i can guarantee okay so with this i would like to conclude the class for today because if i start you know on solving the linear equations it will take long time because there are a lot of cases i want to give examples and run on that it took a long time but uh, uh, before that what I want is that you should you know make yourself very comfortable in finding the rank of a matrix so before I uh, you know dear students before I conclude I always say is that log on to www.konarclasses.com and look for Uh, you know video lectures study material then you can look for DPP that stands for daily practice problems then you can look for PTs that is stands for practice tests okay so these are extremely important dear students DPPs, PTs then you can look for UTs that is stands for unit tests then you can go for MDTs 
it's called module tests and finally empties it is for mock tests once you've done all these things the great rank will be in your hand that i can almost assure you with these dear students i would like to conclude the class for today we will have our next class uh, on monday at 8 30 pm till then please you know practice more uh, to find the rank of a matrix thank you very much thank you sir thank, thank, you, sir. thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you